Hello, Courtney. Oh, there you are. Okay. Just making sure it worked. Okay, you're good. I don't know what happened. I'm just, all I know is it's working, so I'm going to record it. <coughs> you're free to go to your funeral now, Jules. Sorry. <gasps> oh, I love you as a blonde, by the way. I'm loving it. Hey, it should be working. Is there anybody else yeah. in? Yeah. No, it's all good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna take a minute. I just wanted to make sure this bad boy was working. You guys were getting the link. All good. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go cough for a second. All right. All right. Yay for people joining. Let's get this thing recorded so I don't forget. Is it recording? It's recording. Okay. Hey, awesome. How is everybody? Amy's about to come to my house, go through her all their near death experiences. Well, I'm gonna kill you, it's all right. I'm just gonna zero point that and start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, check out my Halloween coffee cup. Is it not perfect? Because sometimes you're sometimes you're the toxic one, right? <laughs> you're toxic. You're toxic. Uh, mirror. <laughs> oh, Christina, gonna come to my house for Halloween. I can't wait. I have your room ready. I oh, cannot wait. 
I have all the spare rooms done in different themes right now. Yep. So the uh, the the gym slash extra bedroom upstairs is the llama suite. It's all about the llama. And then the cowboy room is is like the main guest room. It's got all the cowboy memorabilia that I have nowhere else to put. So it's fun. I'm having fun with it. Sounds okay. Wonderful. Let's get into business here. All right, very important work we have today. So uh, number two part of the webinar. Wait, are we at time yet or do we need to wait? We got one minute. We'll wait, we're just one minute or we'll practice prepare play. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. All right, all good. Okay, let's get into it. Hello, everyone. So basically what I redid was I redid second Sunday in my alchemy class today. So hopefully you guys don't mind that we're gonna post that on YouTube because I was so frustrated that I did not, that, you know, it did not work, that I had to sit in that echo and have my tantrum for a while. And then I was just like, well, I probably missed something, you know, that's usually where I come back to is I probably missed something I was supposed to say. Because that happens sometimes. All right. So day two. Um, I, as I mentioned last week, I really want to start off with questions. Um, I have a lot of content today, so I guess we'll just see if we need to have a bonus day on because I have like four very specific kind of elements that I want to give you guys in your uh, arsenal and awareness and toolbox of, of, you know, me, myself, and I, like this, this idea of this trauma body or this pain body, as we kind of discussed. I don't want to steal Eckhart Tolle's, although it's such a great words, great words, but it really is trauma body, okay? And, uh, and then what happens is trauma body creates trauma personality, all right? Most of you are married to your spouses with your trauma personalities or have divorced them, okay? So this is really going to help you identify not only yours, but other people's. I think after today, if we can get through some of the visuals, you guys are gonna have so much more grace for people, all right? Because I know when you have a, a, when you have a lot of trauma that you're carrying, you don't want anyone to bump into you, okay? It's like having a broken arm and you're like, no cast, right? You don't realize that you're being very protective over yourself because all of this trauma might fall out, okay? And so, you get to a place where you get so happy you forget that it's there. And that's usually when you attract a situation that's going to empty it out in front of everyone. Okay. And so that's really what it is, is you're carrying this very heavy, dense trauma around. Trauma defined emotionally or quantumly is emotion that is too heavy to be expelled or eliminated naturally. Okay, anything that is too heavy that cannot be expelled through your sweat or through your talking about or your sharing or it's too heavy. And the longer we carry it, the deeper it impacts into our biological chemistry. All right. So we talked about last week, the seven year cycle. We talked about the zip drive effect. Every seven years, your brain's like, OK, who are we? Hmm, who have we been? And then it zip drives uh, an algorithm basically the, the conclusion of you, like who you've been the last seven years and then kind of squishes it together and, and creates probability out of it and like a summary. And then there you are. And then that's what you start your next seven years with. And your organs die and come back online. Your cells die and come back online. But when they come back online, they're reading a blueprint. They're reading an etherical blueprint, this subatomic blueprint called Who Am I? so that they can determine who they are, how they are, where they are. They don't care where they are. They're just going, who am I? And they take the calculations of the input in the data in the hard drive, and then they create a life from that. So the health, the, self of your, the health of your cells is determined by who you have believed you are, nothing more. Age is literally, it, time doesn't exist. And I know you've said that to someone before. So if you've, if those words have said out of your mouth, then you cannot say your cells are getting older. Your cells are getting tired of your crap. Your cells are getting tired of carrying all this damage around, of this, this stories around. And the heavier the stories get, 
the heavier your life feels. This is why when you get on my school, my scale at Quantum Fitness, and I look all the way at the bottom at the metabolic age, and it says you're 5, 10, 15 years older than you are, some of you. Some of you are right on time, but is that really how old you feel? If you're 58 years old, are you really 58? I don't think so. You know, so again, it's, it has nothing to do with what's real and solid. What's real and solid is the, is, is the expression, throat chakra, of who you are, okay? How much are you living as a child? How much are you making your life work as a child? You know, for, for most kids, most kids' lives work, especially in this generation. You know, they do not have the trauma that we had. We've made damn sure of that, all right? Some of your pets are taken care of better than we were as children, all right? Some of your house plants, okay? We know. We were the damaged children who are now raising children that we don't want to fall at all, like catching all of their fall, okay? So these kids are manifestors and they are not following the rules. They are definitely not following your rules, probably, or anybody else's rules that are telling them that they can't be who they choose to be, and they have to be able to change their mind. They get to change their gender, okay? So this is a lot for a wounded child inside of you to witness a generation of, of tantrum freedom. What? Although this is what you want for your kids, watching it is very, it's like wrangling a circus. There's no order. There's, there's no like, yes, ma'am. There's like, no, <laughs> there's, there's an equal in your house and they don't even come up to your kneecap, right? So when you have this idea of this unfulfilled wounded child inside of you, you're carrying in your backpack that feels like a bunch of rocks, right? You're feeling that pressure. Now, when that emotion is avoided, all right. It's like if you avoid your cancer, it spreads. If you avoid your cancer in your relationship, it spreads, don't it? Right. Why? Because resistance grows things. Resistance is actually you looking at it so much that the universe looks at it. Did you know that what you're resisting, you are looking at? You don't think you are. You're like, I haven't thought about that in weeks. Part of you has. The part of you called unconscious and subconscious mind that is micromanaging it is always watching what you're avoiding, always watching. Now, you can disillusion yourself from that, and you can find a nice addiction that takes those feelings away from it of what you're avoiding, and you don't think because you don't have the feeling of it that it's not there. That ain't true, okay? It's there. And there's a part of you that now is physically focused on it 24 seven because what scares you, you are always paying attention to because it's a safety precaution, right? Like watching other drivers on the road or watching other people be weird and going, okay, I've got to anticipate this. There's a lot of unconsciousness around me. Remember, I've got this broken arm I'm walking around with and I've got to protect myself. And when you have a lot of trauma, you are a walking, talking, protective, defensive mechanism, constantly. So you are very, very self-focused, even though you could be very, very generous, very empathic. You know, you, you do not need to be selfish and be wounded, but you are self-focused. And here's why. If I'm carrying a bunch of trauma that is nothing more than, than hibernating vibration, Okay. And this trauma is I'm not seen, I'm not heard, I'm not safe, and I'm not loved. I've been rejected and I've been abandoned. And I'm carrying it. And I'm in my 40s. Okay. And my kid starts to feel abandoned. Right. What is that going to do to my trauma? Well, have you ever been around a tuning fork or had tuning forks? You are a tuning fork. So their little trauma starts to shake. And then that shake starts to shake you. And yours starts to spill out. And so you are completely oblivious to what your needs are. All you know is you feel this twice now because you're feeling it within you. And it feels like something you cannot bear to witness them feeling. That's why you, let your, you don't let your kids experience trauma. This is why you're saving the world is because you're feeling the world's pain. When your pain disappears in your body, 
you are not going to have the inspiration to save the world at all. And it isn't coming from numbness or heartlessness. It's coming from awareness of, wow, I saved myself. So if you actually look over here, you can learn how to save yourself by watching me. Because two people trying to save themselves is two dead people, right? Because if my trauma is so big that the only way I can expel my feeling is to feel someone else and heal someone else, that actually adds to my self-rejection and my self-abandonment. This is why recovering people pleasers, recovering doormats, recovering rescuers, right? We literally died from it. Like it never worked. You never actually rescued anyone. If anything, you made enemies. And the reason why is because there is a child inside of there that's saying, let me do this myself. Leave me alone. I'm asking, my pain body is asking you for help. Help me, help me, help me. But my inner child's like, let me do it myself. I want to do this myself. I don't want to need you. I want to grow up away from you. I want to be unattached. Children do not want to be attached. They are only attached if they're scared of their environment. If they are free, if they are sneaking around, you've got a strong, very strong child. Now you got to ask yourself, why does my kid need to shrink around around me? All right. Now, if you have no kids, you probably have a husband. Just kidding. All right. You maybe have some house plants, some other plants. You've got some animals. Maybe you've got some friends. You have some parents that act like children. Okay. You understand what and can identify with what I'm saying here. All right. Now, why? Why is it that the masculine, when, when it gets into a healthy relationship or a relationship at all, the woman always says to me in the sessions, why is he act so childlike? Well, because all his needs are taken care of, empath. You're a mama. You become the mama, the savior, the sister, you know, the best friend, the lover. He gets to be a child again. You see, if there's nothing to build, if there's nothing to protect, if there's nothing to fix, then you've probably got an ornery child in your house because men like to destroy things in order to build it. If, it's, if, if they come in alpha female and it's already done, they're going to try to destroy it so that he could rebuild it how they want it. Okay, so let's look at trauma in the idea of your two brains, masculine and feminine. This isn't about your spouse or your kid. It is about me, myself, and I again, always. Any issue with the kid, any issue with the husband, check your own brain, right? So in part one, and I hope we can all do this, most of you are avid water drinkers or whatever. In part one of quantum fitness, I don't remember, it was first, second, third class. I gave this analogy of, of holding a bottle of water, okay? And this is really what we're going to be talking about today is how this pain body, this trauma body is part of you physically. This is emotion that has become physical. This is a physical incorrect posture that has become emotional pain. I'm going to show you how it all blends the chemical, physical, and emotional trauma that you endure as a physical being that does not get integrated and balanced back into a normal healthy range impacts the physical emotional etherical psychic whatever kind of bodies all negatively all right so if you have a glass of water or a cup or even an empty cup or even your phone next to you or a pencil even something see while we are in a physical body we have, to, we have to learn and develop a relationship until we don't about with gravity, all right? Gravity, density versus light, ice, water, steam, right? You drop an ice on your foot, it hurts, okay? You spill a drop of water, you don't feel it. Same energy, okay? Density is heavy, all right? So let's take this water bottle that I have. It's full. I won't be able to do this very long. And I want you to put it out in front of you. Okay, if you got it, let's all demonstrate. I can all see anybody that's moving right now. Okay, if you have it, try anything you've got in front of you. All right, now I'm leaning, so I'm leveraging. Okay, this is easier right now because I'm actually putting this weight back. I'm putting some of my weight back because my trauma is out front. This is why we need space when we get in a fight, guys, because when we're like this, 
and we're like this, in order for me to balance it, I've got to go like get away from it. Okay. So now I want you to sit up straight and then hold it out with your non-dominant hand. Okay, so I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna use this with my left, all right? Now, three possibilities here. Okay, if I say this is yours, you this is yours, it's yours. How do you feel about it? Oh, I like water, but you know, I don't need it right now, okay? And it's, but, but the water is not water, it's trauma, all right? This is your trauma here. And it happened here, okay? It happened here, 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 okay? But again, you wanna put it out here because you don't want to deal with it. How long can you do this? How long before this becomes unbearable, right? And you got a strong arm and it's not that heavy. But the force of gravity actually creates a magnitude of force for this, which means that this is going to get heavier and heavier and heavier. And within three to five minutes, this will feel about six times heavier than it is. All right. So what are your choices? Well, some of you want to put it down. Okay. But it's yours and you can't put it down and walk away from it. You've got to put it somewhere. Where's the easiest place that I could put this? Right here in a backpack in my central zone of my weight somewhere. If I put it here, I'm going to do this. If I put it here, I'm going to do this. So I'm either going to put it right here, I'm going to put it right here, or I'm going to put it right back here, okay? And this is what we do with trauma, is it's, it happens all around us, and then I can't hold it out for very long, so I bring it in because I believe it's mine. I believe it's mine because I'm identifying with it, even if it's just witnessed, okay? So now this, I could probably do for a very long time. If you've ever like dropped 20 pounds and thought, how could I carry that much weight so easily, right? Even losing five pounds or wearing ankle weights for a while and taking them off and being like, wow, you get used to the weight, don't you? Weight and waiting is the whole premise of quantum fitness part one. So I'm sitting here and this is not uncomfortable at all. It's actually kind of soothing because I'm embracing myself. I can feel the cold water with me and it's mine. And I know I can have it whenever I want, but I also don't want anybody to know it's here or touch it or take it because part of it's mine and I'm identifying with it, but part of me doesn't want to carry this around because I'd love my hands to have freedom. I'd love to be able to touch other things. Okay. So let's look at this analogy as far as your trauma goes. What happens is as soon as you bring it into your field, it mixes with all the other ingredients of you and it becomes you. It becomes you. It alters every cell. You cannot have two chemical elements touch and not have them create a new substance. It's science. It's basic science. My son is learning that in third grade. Okay. You cannot, everything is creates an alteration. So trauma alters the genetic package, okay? It also awakens DNA and genetics that have a similar tuning fork. This is how genetic disposition works. Because if I have a very you know, strong situation that is a emotional manifestation of let's say cancer, and then all of a sudden I have breast cancer, just like my grandmother, and I could say, darn it, or I could say, darn it, I woke up that cancer memory by having the same feeling, right? This is epigenetics 101, right? And we use a lot of epigenetics and quantum fitness to understand who and what we are and what we are capable of. Because although we're carrying a buttload of trauma around, probably imagine how many of these you probably have, okay? Now, you think that a, a trauma is not, it does not have a, a, a physical mass. You may think, think that it doesn't, but anything below the spectrum of boredom on your emotional worksheet that I gave you guys last week has a physical weight, legit, adds weight to your mass, adds weight. Have you been around someone who's really skinny, but really critical? Ooh, heavy energy, heavy. Been around someone who's really big, but super funny? heavy body okay you're gonna put your water bottle somewhere but it's not going to be the same as everybody else you can lose a bunch of weight and not lose your trauma you just put it somewhere else okay 
Where you put it, well, look what, where you, what you're addicted to and what you're avoiding, all right? So when we're talking about this idea of the trauma body, what we're doing is you are, you are a being that is balancing time, gravity, space, and freedom all the time. You're, in, you're on a, in a balancing act. You're on a tightrope all the time. Your life is, okay? You're going this way and then you got to overcompensate. You're going this way and then you got to overcompensate. Just talking about this in the alchemy class. And I changed my clothes so you guys wouldn't get confused which video it was. <laughs> okay, that's the only reason I changed. <laughs> so I wanted you to be like, wait, didn't we just watch this class? No, I know you do that off my outfits. It's just a thing. So this idea is that you're balancing like this constantly instead of getting like this and then walking forward. Your entire life is this. And you manage this with addictions and taking this out to the therapist and then putting it back. And then you're, you know, chipping away a little bit of it and then it gets raw and vulnerable and then someone pushes it and then it gets bigger, right? So this shadow work we've been doing for a very long time, if we aren't integrating and showing up differently, then all we're doing is walking around with a broken arm without a, a you know, without a crutch on it, without a bandage, you know, without a brace. And then we are very, very careful who we're around. If you are an empath that is like, I'm not around certain type of people, it's because you got no brace around your trauma. All right. You got, you're just out there. You got no boundaries. So you don't feel safe around certain type of people. Right. If you had your force field, which I'm going to show you how to rebuild, which is your etherical three foot field of what we call your auric field is actually technically a force field. If that was intact and healthy, you would not need boundaries. You would be a boundary. You would be a force of nature. You're not going to walk up and grab a rose bush, are you? No, you're not going to go put your hand on a fire. No, because you understand that although you don't have to be afraid of those two things, they can be dangerous. And your energy field, the energy in your body could literally electrically uh, support an entire community for like three and a half weeks, one day of your energy field. That's how strong you are. Okay. But when you're traumatized and your cells are like, we don't know who we are and we're not allowed and we have no money and no one loves us. And, you know, we're ugly, whatever the stories of the cells of the last 40 some years you've been telling or 30 or 60, then all they're doing is when they have their death experience and they come back because your cells always come back, they come back as the updated blueprint. <clears throat> this is why every seven years we carry this trauma. It just gets more impacted. And then you need a freaking root canal for your trauma, right? You literally have to have it extracted because once this virus, right, it acts just like a virus in your computer. It seeps in, somebody, you know, does something and puts, you know, you open somebody's email and you're like, what? You know, and then all of a sudden you're like, whew, got rid of that. You didn't. It's now festering, right? And because you're unaware of it, and you were like avoiding it very quickly. You forgot it was there. And now this water mixed with your water, this trauma mixed with your body and is now seeping into all of your software, all of your programs, all of your apps, all of your friends, all of your money, all of your thoughts, or all of your emotions, all of your cells, all of your muscles, all of your organs, all of your blood, all of your bones down into the marrow. Once you get into the marrow, you're hitting the non-physical reality again, and non-physical reality is going to take you to a subatomic blueprint. If it gets down there and it only takes, guess how many years? It only takes three seven-year cycles to impact 21 years of having the same trauma to impact all seven layers of you. That's it. So now think, who were you when you were 21? You started probably behaving your trauma out. You started becoming your trauma at 21. You weren't a grown up. You were probably in some rebellion or some good girl somewhere or some bad boy or something. And maybe you're still just a tired version of that. I don't know. But usually after that, those third years, now every part of your body believes this about you. 
And the hardest part about it, guys, is because conscious awareness is only 5% of your vibration, it has no clue. You have no idea that your personality identification is trauma bonded. You don't know that you aren't you. You still feel like you, you still feel like everything, but then all of a sudden your body is like not behaving. It's behaving as if someone was traumatized. You know, you're, you're either saving the world or you're destroying it. Like you're on some sort of mission. And that because the ego's height of its awareness is milking the delicious youthful hormones that you have until your 28th year, you feel invincible. And then you hit 30 and you have the wrong pillow and you need to go to the ER. You're like, oh, I'm dying from the wrong pillow in your 30s. What? You are literally superhuman. Literally. So let's look at this idea of this idea of this water here. And it's going to tie in to this idea of when I say we don't wait in quantum fitness. In, in, in quantum method, we don't wait. We practice, prepare, and play. Now that's the solutions, but I added one in quantum fitness. It's another P, 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 P's. It's called posture. All right. Now the human head weighs eight pounds. I learned this from watching Jerry Maguire. All right. Now human head weighs eight pounds. Now, maybe my head's a little less because like I'm very small, like a little sprite. Maybe my head is maybe six pounds. All right. But still. How, how much is my water bottle? Like not even a pound, a few ounces. It's, yeah, it's literally 16 ounces plus the plastic, okay? So, and I'm holding this out and I'm getting tired. Now, let's look at your posture, peeps. Ha uh ha, -huh. let's look. And the matrix does this to you because of this. You're like this, all right? So for every centimeter, that your head sticks out further than its true alignment, you're carrying triple the weight, okay? So this adds physical mass to your body. This also uses up a lot of your life force energy, a lot more of your energy to have a forward head carriage. Now, I know you've been to the chiropractor and they've showed you that hump on your back and you're like, what is happening to me, right? And they're going, oh, with, you know, 78 sessions and your firstborn and $10,000, we can fix this. But if this is emotional, okay, they can't align something that's in a protective element. Sorry, if you guys are chiropractors, you're probably gonna delete me off forever, okay? But I'm saying it works, alignment of the spine, but I'm gonna tell you how we do it naturally once we get to the end of this webinar, all right? Because it's also a trauma response, a forward head carriage. When your head goes forward, you are protecting your heart chakra, okay? You are the bull. You are protecting your heart. You are head ahead of yourself. You are covering the inner child who sits right here. You are the mama, the dad that is out here. So if your chiropractor starts going, hey, your head's forward, we got to push it back. What is that going to do with your emotional well-being of why you put your head out there in the first place? Okay. So if I put my head out here, right, it's a protective element. Now I'm going to train my head by sitting wrong all day and I'm going to get carpal tunnel and they're going to want to cut this right here when it's actually this right here. So Western is scary. But when we look at the body as the whole system, and we look at this, this class that I just did in my alchemy masterclass of this idea of you're not in lack, you're starving, all right? You're not in lack, you're starving. You're quite abundant and you know it. You might be abundant in a lot of shit you've settled for, but you are abundant. What you are is starving for what you really truly are, okay? You're starving to demonstrate your true self. You are starving to be yourself. You are starving to be free. You are starving to be seen and heard. You are starving to be known. And then because you're starving, that's a safety issue. If you've ever been starving, what are you thinking about? Okay. What are you thinking about when you're starving? You've got a 911 hangry situation coming. You are not you. You are some monster 
right? Especially women. We let our blood sugar get so low and we turn into really scary people, all right? Because of the amount of estrogen that adrenaline creates a space with, with cortisol, when our blood sugar, we have, if we say we're hungry men out there, you got 27 minutes before I hurt you. 27, okay? Just, to, just for reference point, okay? This is why I carry snacky snacks everywhere I go because I know there's a child in here that's like the blood sugar gets low because I'm having fun or whatever, right? You got to carry, you got to have the munchies there for you. Now, what's going to happen to your blood sugar if you're carrying all this extra weight, okay? And what's happening in the other part of the body? So I've got some fun diagrams. I did not draw this time. I know you're really going to be deprived from my, um, my artistic abilities here. But let's check this out. I just borrowed some beautiful other people's artistry here. Okay. I don't know if that's very big. I don't know if we can make it bigger. Um, I've got all kinds of fun stuff here. Let's see if we can make you bigger. I bet I can stretch you out. I don't see anything. You don't see anything? The white screen. What? You don't see this picture? Oh, wait, you are collaborating. Oh, I didn't share my screen, that's why. Let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. Share. Okay, you see my whiteboard now? No? Hold on, I'll get it. Mm. I saw it before. You what? You saw it before? Yeah, I saw it before. Oh, good. Okay. Now go. we're at to a Zoom page. Where okay. It looks like you're moving your cursor around. Or they I are. Am. I am. I'm going to go back to my whiteboard because it might just be you, Barbara. Um, let's see. Mm, can do it, you guys see this now? Can you see my picture? I see no. that. You can see it? I, I do. Yeah, I do. Okay. Darn it. You have the supervision. Um, okay, no. Hold on. Let me see. Let me see if I can share this. Uh, share whiteboard. Ooh, yay. Um, can you guys see it now? I still can't. I, can't. I, I still can. I am able to see it. How heavy is your head? Yeah, pounds? hold on. Give me a sec here. Um, let's see, viewer, commentator, editor. I'm gonna let you guys be viewers. There you go. Copy link, share, share whiteboard. Okay, well, let me see if I can put it in the chat then. Okay, I shared it in the chat. So those of you who can't see it, see if you can pull it up in the chat. I'm just learning this whiteboard. I think it's genius that Zoom has a whiteboard now because I'm just like a very visual learner. I think you guys are too. Uh, only invited users can view. Anyone with a Zoom account, that's fine. <laughs> I got nothing to hide here. Okay. Were you guys able to open it in the chat? Search the chat for me. Anne, can you see it in the chat? Well, it's there. All right, darn it. Well, I'm gonna keep going. Uh, I don't wanna waste too much of your time. Um, I'll, maybe, maybe some voice inside of here who knows what the hell's going on will talk to me while I'm talking to you. All right, uh, let's see, who can see what you shared here? Everyone, it says everyone. Share a whiteboard. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can do this personally here. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I got some good visuals for you guys. Um, mine said that you have to allow us to share your whiteboard. Mm -hmm. What? So we sort of had to sign into this place, uh, the link, and it said um, you have to allow us to share your whiteboard. Yeah. Okay. 
um, share the screen. Yeah. And that's just my Zoom account again. Okay. Burnet participants can now see your screen. Okay, let's see if I can pull up this. Well, let's open this and see. Oh, that's not great. Sorry, guys. I'm a netty professor. I'm really smart and I'm really not. Uh, let's see. Stop sharing. Okay. Well, anyways, it was a picture. For now, I'm just going to keep going. Um, it was a picture of the guy's head like here, here, and here, right? And so you're, you're never, your life's never going to be the same after this webinar, by the way, because you're going to be noticing this everywhere. Okay. So a lot of the times you feel like when you see someone with extremely bad posture that they've like either had some accident, you know, but I would say that bad posture, 95% of bad posture comes from emotional baggage, emotional baggage. And here's why you're protecting your heart. Okay. You're on your phone, you're sitting, you're slumped. Right. And all of a sudden, the atrophy of your core begins to give out. Giving birth to a child creates atrophy in your core and your, your gut is not supporting you anymore. OK, so how we fix the back and the neck is actually with the root. The root, the root will set you free. OK, the root chakra. I'm hoping to do some de demonstrations, some you know, some um, hump in here in a minute, but but just bear with me. Those of you guys who've gone through quantum fitness know that this is a very awkward position that when we're we're realigning, because again, once it gets to your subatomic space, okay, what turns it on turns it off. We actually have to go into the physical body and we have to alter it. You cannot do it from gusts of alignment. You can't do it from one session. What got you there? consistency. What's going to get you out of it? Consistency. All right. This isn't a one time you're fixed. That's why when you go to the Cairo, they're like three times a week for like a year to fix that. I mean, just a quarter of an inch can give you an extra six months of Cairo. Okay. Not that I'm against that. I love chiropractic. I love everything they stand for. Okay. But what I'm saying is if it's an emotional situation, you know, it's like me saying my kid is scared of the dark, but I keep turning off the light. If it's a safety precaution for you to do this, think about it in past. You walk into a room. Are you like this? Or are you slowly like this? And then you see someone else with bad posture and you're like, <laughs> you check yourself when you see someone else. You're like, oh, God, am I standing like that? And then someone starts talking to you and the smaller you get, the smaller you get, the smaller you get, the smaller you get, or I don't want anyone to see me. Okay. It's like every one of you hire me and you pay me a lot of money to say, how can I be seen and heard? And then I say like this and you go, I don't want them to see and hear me. You see? So it's like, what are you paying me for? Okay. And that's when I was like, we got to change this trauma body because again, you want to be seen and heard. Your body does not. Your body's been violated, rejected, abandoned, abused, neglected. It is going, do not look at me in this condition. Wait till I'm perfect, right? And then, then you can see me. And your conscious is saying, I just want to share what I know. I just want to go on an adventure. I just, I just want to go. We can't wear a bikini now. Okay, well, then I guess we're not going to the beach, you see? So it's like, think about you versus this, right? Think about that. I'm going. Oh, I don't have the money. That was your body secondary, wasn't it? You know, someone says, blah, blah, blah. You're, Hell yeah. And then you look at your circumstances. I'll get back to you. You see, your circumstances is the manifestation of the biology of the health of the body. How much trauma are you carrying in your body is going to determine how free you are. All right. So let's look at the beautiful idea of Kundalini. Right now, for those of you who are like, what's a Kundalini? It's an expression of an ener of all of your energy systems moving in an infinity way up the body, okay, and back down through the body in a flow. 
okay? It's all the meridians working together. It's the harmonious of oxygen. It's alignment, all right? So do you feel aligned with your body? When you lift a weight, is your right hand bigger or stronger than the left? Are, are your shoulders like this, okay? Is one hip bigger than the other? And the reason why isn't any other reason than you're compensating, okay? Compensation is why your body gets all crazy altered. Even if you've had an injury, because your body can miraculously heal in the right place if it's put back together. If it's put back together right, then it will heal right. If it's not put back together right, and that could be mentally or physically, okay? So let's say that you manifest a car accident because of an emotional accident, right? A PTSD moment, um, a, a trauma in stimulation, and boom, there you are, head impact. And you're, you, you break, your bones break, okay? And these amazing surgeons start putting you back together and bracing you up to the best of their ability. Those surgeons are an actor in your vibrational movie of how aligned you're ready to be. So if doctor messed you up, you can thank your own trauma for manifesting that. Yes. Don't tell me you create your own reality and then say, no, I didn't choose that surgeon. Yes, you did. Because that surgeon had to put you back together how you felt. I'm broken. I'm broken. I'm broken. I'm broken. And your surgeon's like, I'm going to fix her. I'm going to fix her. But the biofeedback that he's channeling is she's broken. And I left my scalpel in there, damn it. You see, so it's a hot mess now. Okay. And so now you got metal in your arms and you got, you're turning into a robot, okay? So the simple science of our biochemistry states that alignment is healthy flow, right? If you're needing acupuncture every week, Cairo every week, right? Then what it's saying is, is I am so dismantled that my body is malfunctioning that I need a manual override at least once, twice, three times a week just to feel better relief. But if I have an emotional story that I don't want to be seen and heard, I'm going to put myself back into this position. And this is a catch 22, funny year we're in. Because the way your energy vortexes work is they only work in harmonious flow if they are aligned. Your chakras actually work counterclockwise if your posture is off, think about this, counterclockwise, counterintuitive, okay? So they are not intuitive. They are counterintuitive. So those inspirations and ideas you're getting when you're like this probably shouldn't go with it because it's probably hope that turns into excitement, that turns into expectations, that turns into disappointment, that turns into depression. And now you're really like this. So just sit, right? Normal position. If you're standing, stand. Not in this way, but in your most comfortable flow right now. And notice, do your shoulders hold themselves up or do you have to slump them slightly? How strong does your gut feel, okay? So this is just an awareness check because I will tell you, I have... There's a lot of beef that I have with the spiritual community and the science community because the science community is like, do a muscle check. And I'm like, what? To traumatize muscles? They go alive. Your muscle testing is a liar, okay? Because the muscle is traumatized. It's become the identity of the trauma. It's going to give you a false counterintuitive answer sometimes, especially if it's in protection of itself. Okay, so throw your muscle testing away and look at your balance. When you are in the flow, you'll notice, and I, I tell all my guys this that come through the quantum fitness, is you're going to stop thinking with your head pretty soon, and you're going to start thinking with your gut, and it's very weird. Your gut, 70% serotonin, I am safe, is your intuition. Now, normal sit, right? Now, I want you to put your shoulders all the way up to take all of the pressure off of your tummy. Lift yourself up. Look how much taller you are. Look how much more confident you look. And some of this is very uncomfortable for some of you, okay? 
Now, I want you to take one step forward. I want you to put your finger on your chin and push it back, okay? Notice how much flow is in your gait right now. You just took about eight pounds off your gut. You just took about eight pounds off of your heart, okay? And you took eight pounds off you because you put it back in. It's no longer tipping forward. You're running into the future. I'm running into the future because the past is the other balance point. This is the present moment, all right? Now, really notice your shoulders. Notice your chin. Now think about walking outside like this. Some of you are like, what? That would be like puffing my chest energy. I don't want people to know that I'm out there like this. Think about that. You just said, you just hired me for 10 grand to say, I want to be seen and heard. But you don't want to do this because this isn't safe. This identifies you as someone that is confident. And it probably actually hurts if your root is so have you guys ever bought a new rug and you try to lay it out and it goes, right? And you try to lay it out and it goes back and you literally have to like put rocks on each corner. Okay. This is what's going to happen to your body. It's like a coil. Now, a lot of you also hire me and say, I want my Kundalini energy open, but right now it's all counterintuitive. And so if we just opened you up, you might go actually crazy with that much power in flowing into all that trauma now. You might go to the loony bin. I think I probably should have gone because mine opened with all my trauma inside of me all at the same time. I got super traumatized basically by my own Kundalini. So now I have access to the whole universe, no tools, and I know way too much and no way to fix it. Okay. So that is not something I would recommend. And sometimes when you guys are going to the chiropractor, you're, you're cruising for a bruising. You're going to open that Kundalini up. And then what's going to happen is you're not ready. So if your natural reaction is to go back to here, you have to honor that your body's not safe yet. Okay. This is why I tell you guys, don't start wearing your posture strap until you've after or right before the biohacking process. Now, again, I, I'll sh I'll tell, I have all of these notes for you. So I guess what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to put all of the pictures into like a slideshow that you'll have to watch after. And you'll be like, oh, that makes perfect sense. So you're just going to have to use your own visuals here. I basically shared a picture of your seven chakras, your front forward head carriage, and how much weight it actually adds, what it does to your nervous system. Because if I'm always about to fall, what do you think my nervous system is going to do? Is it always in fight or flight just from this? Do you know that this adds to my fight or flight that because I'm going, oh, I have to do this. And so then I have to do this and then I have to do this and I can't sleep. Okay. And so what it does is it collapses your root chakra and forces it to stay a seed. Your root chakra will never open and bloom if you have bad posture. Okay. Most people in America that I have seen I want to go give them a posture strap. That's what everybody's getting for Christmas. They're going to be like, what? Here you go. I, you're, you got flowers on yours. Okay. And the reason why is because just a simple, daily, subtle, gentle movement to retrain the muscles. You're going to be more in front of your trauma too. You're going to manifest more of your trauma with this posture strap. Okay. So I'm, I'm asking you guys, don't do anything that's extreme here. Because this is actually protecting your trauma, remember? Like this is protecting you. So now everybody can see it, can't they? Everybody's looking at me. Why are they looking at me? Because I got my toxic trauma right here, okay? And I don't want anybody to see it. So I'm gonna put my head out here so you guys get my words and you get my head strongness and you get my stubbornness. And so I'm protecting the rest of me. But when I'm like this, I'm adding a huge pressure to my gait and my root chakra and my gut. Open it up. Oxygen. Now let's go back to the very first thing I said is when you are in a survival mode, you are starving. What do you think your root chakra is starving for like this? Oxygen. Your gut, your hips, your butt, your legs. Girls, you want to know why you have cellulite? This, okay? 
Why is it mostly on the bottom part of my body? Because there's no oxygen and your fascia is destroyed, okay? There is no oxygen going into those tippy toes. This is why you, you get varicose veins. No oxygen. Now, root chakra, bottom part of you, masculine. No energy, no coordinates, no purpose, no go, no fuel, okay? Anybody that's got better posture is probably more productive. You're wondering why you procrastinate. You're wondering why you feel lazy, lethargic, why you keep your lower back keeps going out, your lumbar, your sciatic, your SI, okay? Now, some of you guys got into accidents, right? This wasn't all a molestation or a physical abandonment, emotional abandonment. Some of you were in physical accidents that didn't heal properly, and it caused your body to try to find alignment. Your body is always going to find alignment, like a tree growing that way, right? You think it's growing sideways, but it's probably found alignment with the with the level, you, you're you actually not straight. The tree is more straight than you are probably, you see? So it's, your body's going to find alignment and it's gonna find the safest alignment for your stories inside, okay? So notice when you get around people, if you go like this or you go like that, okay? You'll notice men will go like this and women will go like this in public, watch. People watch. One of the unfortunate events of my childhood was I had to learn to study body language. I could anticipate people's motions and I could anticipate what people were going to do to me if I knew what their body was doing. I learned to smell inside the body very early too because I could see, I could smell adrenaline and that was a safety precaution. And we don't need to get into that because it's not an active story. But I'm telling you that your energy has a signature way before you even open your mouth. And your body language has everything to do with who you think you are, okay? When you feel good in your body, when your head is up high, when you're wearing clothes that feel good on you, you are fearless, aren't you? Like, you got the right attitude, right outfit, you can do anything, okay? You're having a good hair day, your day's about to go better, okay? You, your back doesn't hurt, woohoo, okay? You didn't sleep on the wrong pillow. You understand that you could literally sleep on rocks with right alignment and you wouldn't be sore the next day. But see what happens is when one part of your body has to compensate for the other, this part gets very strong and this part gets very weak, okay? This gets atrophied, which means the muscles don't need to be used so they get lazy. And they also get all knotted up because there's no oxygen flowing. This side of the body is like He-Man and the Hulk and is now overdeveloped and overcompensating. And so you might feel like you are gonna be hurt more over here, but this is the strong using you. The pain is actually here that's dying flesh and dying muscle and atrophied and it blocks the flow. So just a quarter of an inch of a forward head carriage, which is what that is, you're carrying your head forward, okay? It can destroy your gut. Now your gut is your root chakra. Your root chakra says, I matter. Or counterintuitive, I don't matter. Your posture, guys, is the manifestation of your trauma body. All right? Now, fixing your posture is a huge first start. All right? But you've also got to find out why your posture is this way. You know, this is an inner child protection. This is a security blanket right? It's like, this is, this is a, a very important first relationship check-in. Just when you start, I'm going to give you guys my favorite links of Amazon. And no, I don't get any paid from Amazon from this. It's just that I've bought in all of them. I like the ones with no wire that just feel like it's like a second skin and that they adjust and they're comfortable, right? Oh, Barb's got hers, right. It's literally like really light. And I can wear mine for several hours without um, it, it bothering me, okay? And I always recommend that you wear it when you are the most unconscious, okay? Sitting down on your phone, doing dishes, driving, 
These are some of your most unconscious places, believe it or not. And when you are unconscious, you go fully into the trauma body. Your body goes into its natural state, like, burr, right? And then someone comes around and you're like, hey, <laughs> how's it going? Okay. So notice for yourself, you guys, awareness is 90% of your healing here. It's 90%. And it's, it's like this, this gentle reminder. It's like when your mom used to say, hey, sit your, you fix your posture. And you'd be like, mm. but then as soon as she'd look away, you forget. So it's like this gentle friend that you get. Now let's look at another idea of the rug folding out and wanting to come back in the coiled experience. What do we do to babies to make them sleep? Swaddle them, don't we? So your forward head carriage is your swaddling. It's you wrapping yourself in yourself. It's you tucking yourself all the way in like a burrito. See, now we're using like weighted blankets and things like this, but this is an expression of you needing to be squished in. You want to take up less space. You want to disappear. You want to be invisible. Okay. But counterintuitive energy. What do you think that's doing? If my root is counterintuitive and it is saying, I am life and I am the expression of life and I am giving life and, and the root chakra spins clockwise, like, like a vortex that is so powerful. What if it's going the other way? Are you pulling energy towards you or are you pushing energy out? Anyone who walks this way has a vortex of sucking in everyone's energy in. You become a black hole. You suck everyone's root energy in. As soon as your shoulders do this, you are now taking everyone's energy in. When I do this, I'm giving everyone my energy, whether you like it or not. And some of you are afraid to share. I don't want to share my energy because there's trauma in there. I don't want to share. I want to take. I want to take. Then I don't want to take. I don't want to feel someone's headache. You know, I have not experienced people's feelings in a long time. As soon as I healed my posture, I stopped feeling my kids' headaches. I mean, that was like, I thought that was just mommy intuition, but I can know they have a headache without feeling it with them. Okay. You will still be very intuitive guys. You aren't going to lose your healing abilities, but you don't need to feel people's cancer when you're working on him. You don't. It's so draining because you are literally taking in that equation of that, that cigarette smoke you're walking through. When you walk like this, you have your force field active. How long can you walk around like this for? This, within three and a half weeks of repairing your posture, you're rebuilding a force field. This force field is sustainable energy for you. In this next webinar, I'm going to show you guys how to manifest with nothing outside of you. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Me, myself, and I, you don't need money. You don't know people. You could be trapped in a house in the middle of nowhere with a serial killer hunting you every night. And I'll show you how to get out. Guaranteed. With me, myself, and I, that's it. You don't need anything outside of you, but you're sucking in everyone's energy. You're walking around this. You're holding and avoiding and hiding your trauma. You're lopsided and you're becoming an overthinker, a fatigued overthinker. Now, when you're stressed out, you're overthinking, you're adrenalizing stress hormones. Your stress hormones are now becoming super thinking. Think about it. Adrenaline, fight, flight, freeze, fawn friend. You are adrenalized, okay? Adrenaline is a superhuman hormone. It creates 600% strength in your body. Now, I'm sitting here like this, and I'm triggered. Where do you think all that adrenaline can go? Where's it going? Right here. Nowhere else, because it's all blocked up. Adrenaline can't even get anywhere else. I can't even feel oxygen in my root right now. Okay? It's all here. This is why your head gets so hot when you're triggered. This is why you have so many thoughts. This is what scenario thinking is. This is when you start going in a dark, 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 dark place of assumptions. Okay. And because you have 600% strength now of 
your nervous systems like reserves and you're using every ounce of your cortisol, which is all your sugars, your fuel to think, you can think, think quite aggressively while every other part of your body is starving. Every time you get triggered and you think, your body begins to starve. If your root was open and it was open like this, you would show up so much differently into your triggers. First and foremost, you'd be present. If you're forward head carriage, you're either in the future or in the past because you are butt in the past, head in the future. You see that? It's literally like, I always teach metaphors because I just feel like it makes sense. But this is a real legit metaphor. When you go look at your own posture of me living in the past and present and future, like, right? You start doing Pilates and yoga and your, your, your posture starts to, it gets better. But if you have a trauma posture, if your posture is coming from trauma, you won't lose weight in yoga, okay? You'll be the yoga teacher that's like got some spares, okay? And that's nothing wrong with it. It's just an awareness because where you're carrying physical weight is where your body is starving the most. Where do you carry weight the most? Okay, where is that blood not flowing? Where is oxygen not flowing? Where is there impacted trauma? Most of it happens around the root, the heart, okay? The throat chakra, okay? And the root is your whole trunk, ladies. Junk in a trunk, thank gosh, it's popular, but we don't want all of it, right? Okay? Like there's a lot of excess in there. Guys are like, yay, look at that trauma booty walking clothes. Woohoo, I like it. I know. It's all, mine's all the rest of it's there. So I get it. But at the same time, the parts of you that you look in the mirror and you're like, ugh, that's your trauma. Like you've got to start being kind. And the more you do this to hide it, I remember I used to always have such a big tummy. Like my tummy, it's probably why I don't have a, top that's not a midriff now because my tummy was so big it was it, it felt so bloated all the time and it felt so disgusting that I would always put my hands like in front of me always it was just like if I'm standing there I'm I'm like this and I didn't realize that I was literally kind of acting like you know a, a, a crutch for my own trauma I didn't want anybody to look at my stomach and it always hurt and so then it was like as soon as I would get naked, it was the first thing I saw. Guaranteed, the part of you that's been the most traumatized, it's probably the chakra that is the most traumatized or holding the most trauma is the one that you can't get perfect or in your eyes or get the way you want it to look through your eyes. No one else's. Who cares what anyone else thinks, right? So let's jump into some questions, okay? Who has questions? I will give you guys these visuals, I promise. And again, I think I think I talked through it enough. Go ahead, Barb. I just have a quick one because you were talking about hands on tummy kind of thing. What about ladies with our big boobs? Like we still slump. We, uh -huh. you know, and I, But I can remember being a kid and just like, well, I got to hold them up. And so I was actually doing the opposite. Is that just resistance? I mean, I well, still also embarrassment. I mean, what happens when yeah. we get big boobs at a young age? I know I was like a D in the sixth grade. Me too. So like I would use ace bandages to try to lower that ratio. So we didn't want that attention. Yeah. You know? So in relationship to like slumping and posture and, and the, the being smaller. So maybe it's big boobs. We wanted them to look smaller. We wanted right. to look smaller. smaller. Right. Or we want them to look bigger. Some of them, you know, like, again, we're hiding some insecurity. Okay. But like for, yeah, for us, for those girls that were inappropriately managed as becoming women, right. Whether we developed or not. I mean, it, this is all about hiding. It's all about covering yourself up. I mean, when you don't feel good in your body, you don't want people to see it. Okay. You don't, you don't want, you don't want to look at it. And you don't want to look at it. So you're like, I know you don't want to look at it. Okay. Because the trauma manifests from the avoiding and the carrying other people's trauma and carrying their trauma in. And now it's starting to get heavy here. You see? So now I've got a balance in the back. Okay. And when I get triggered, I balance like this. And I want to run away. You see? So my trauma comes out. And then I'm like, oh, I've got to balance myself. You see? Does that make sense? 
So yeah, I mean, again, everybody's story is going to be slightly different. There's no matter of facts here in this universe. Like I'm giving you guys the like the low hanging fruit scenarios here. There's going to be some more complicated situations. Some posture is interrupted by a chemical invasion. Some of it's in, it's a physical impact. Like Barb had a skiing accident 20 years ago. Okay, and but everything ultimately comes down to energy. Everything is ultimately energy first. And then it manifests into some sort of form. So whether you didn't heal correctly because of the doctor or you didn't heal correctly because of your mindset, whatever, it's all you. You created it and you're sitting in this body. Now, why this body is so important is because we realize that we can't get rid of it. And we're going to have to use it to ascend. We're going to have to be in it and have a very good relationship with it. We're going to have to turn it on and it's going to turn on us. All right. We're going to have to get to know this. And we've been walking around with these heavy backpack full of rocks and it's turned into weight and waiting. It manifests physical weight as weight and waiting. It manifests as broke and broken. It manifests as I want to be seen and heard, but I don't want to be seen and heard, okay? It manifests as I'm better than you and I'm worthless, all in the same thoughts, okay? So when we're thinking about our posture, you want to look at your posture as your character, as your, as your person, okay? Who is the you inside of your heart that is just dying to come out, is like, I want to go explore this world. I want to take this world. I want to teach this world. I want to love this world. I want to give to this world. I want to take from this world. I want everything. Who is that inside of you? And why are you hiding it? Okay. You got to sit down and do some soul searching with this. And I recommend physical biohacking because we've done enough therapy. We've talked about this enough, right? We've sweated it out in the gym. We've meditated it. We've past life regressed it. We've sold, retrieved it. We've quantum leaped it, right? And still our posture is like this. So it's a, it's a repositioning, okay? Because children have amazing posture until they stop moving, until they stop being free, okay? And if you look at them, they're so confident and they're just giving the world their energy and they're sharing and they're, they're, they're just walking around like little kings and queens, okay? And you might look at that and go, that scares me intuitively because everyone's looking at them. Because you can feel everyone looking at them because they are aware, but they have a force field. And unless you're actually overriding their force field with your trauma, right? You can do this. Then they could actually teach you something, right? Notice when you're really in the flow. Notice your posture when you're really in the flow. When higher self manages to get inside of there for a few minutes, how boom, you come up. You're like, whoa. This is why becoming the character is such a biohack. You know, having a daily, daily routine of consistency. You consistently put this trauma into seven forms of you consistently. And now you have to consistently work it out consistently. You have to be there. You have to show up. You have to nurture. And you can't keep going for a quick fix. You can't just keep going for one energy session here or, or go to yoga when you are traumatized in your relationship. If you are like in a very toxic relationship and you go to yoga, it's like trying to unravel the rug. As soon as you come home, <laughs> okay, you're going back into the fetal position. And all that yoga is just there waiting to be expressed, right? So it's almost like, I want you to look at where you are being counterintuitive right now. Where are you investing in healing, investing in your body, nutrition, exercise, but you're not investing in, in getting safe. You're not, you're in a cluttered home. You're in an unhealthy home. You are eating bad food for you, or at least the way you feel. I feel we can alchemize food. And so food becomes our bitch at some point. I truly believe that. But until you have a good relationship with your body and you are the commander in chief of this thing, food is going to alter you because food is information. See, 
ultimately, whoever has the strongest vibration creates the vibration. All right. So if I'm a lower vibration because I'm depressed and I eat something that's toxic with a very high vibration of toxins, okay, it's a very strong vibration, it's going to alter me. But if I am in my higher self, I probably wouldn't be able to eat a Twinkie. But if I did, that Twinkie would alchemize. It would become me because I am the strong force. Now, you are positive, light. You get around someone negative and you're like, buzzkill. And now you're like, mm, you see? So you are altered. How you know that you are a healed being is when you're, you do not alter around anyone or anything. When your story doesn't change because there's a storm, when your story doesn't change because you just got punched in the face, you remain you. This is how you know. If you want to know how you know, you know, and we're all working towards that. And most of us are becoming a little bit more bulletproof because we're doing this work. We're not just doing the work when we can afford it. We're creating part of this work into every part of our day. It's helping us show up. And as soon as Anne got her body in shape, she started doing reels on Instagram every day. Why? Because she was okay with people seeing her body now. As a healer, it's like, I, I want people to see me as a representation. Now, I don't believe that you have to look any particular way to be a teacher or a guru, but I do think that you have to feel that you look a certain way for you. It's all how you feel, right? How you are glowing from the inside. You like, Anne wants people to see that now about her, right? And so that's why she has a social media presence. Am I right? Yeah, this actually ties in. It's kind of a question, but um, an observation. So when you're talking about posture, I was smiling from the inside out because yesterday with a client, that's literally the thing that I shared about the posture. Mm -hmm. And when we moved into this house in Florida, there, there's no basement here. So a lot of the houses don't have basements. So our teeter that used to be in the basement and it's now on the ground level. So it's always there, no excuse not to use it. My root and everything has opened up so much more and since last week and then I've been doing it every day sometimes twice a day and just like surrendering and just feeling things just open up mm -hmm. and just like I remember from your quantum fitness like when you're like remembering to your abs like that holding like where is your carriage? Like, where is your head? Where is everything? And it makes such a difference of when the manifestations are coming in or how the day is going. And where I'm going with this is like when you're talking about um, when things are off and we're pulling in everybody else's stuff mm -hmm. that we don't necessarily want. But if we're upright, isn't it also because we're all connected, is that somehow related? Like there's the trauma body, but is there like, I don't know, I'm kind of throwing out there, like a non-trauma body where your, your representation of higher self and right. being inspired. Right, right. because that you guys, sense? yes, 100%. And that's actually where I'm gonna end today. So your higher self is the physical, when it physically manifests in the body, it's gonna be in the root not in the crown. It's not going to be in the crown. It's going to be in the root. Have you ever noticed how men lose weight faster than women? Have you noticed this? Let me explain why. Okay. And this is going back to our final understanding of hormones. All right. You guys have heard me talking about use your stress hormones to burn fat and energy. I'm going to show you exactly how this works. Okay. When I am closed up like this, all of my energy is in my head, all of it. And then whatever's left goes to feed the starving rest of my depleted body. Now I'm also working out. I'm doing energy work. I'm doing a million things. Why am I like this? Isn't this amazing how resilient the body is? The body is literally malnourished and it can still like this and it can still do your whole day. It's amazing what willpower can be, right? Now, 
when we start rebuilding the body from the inside up, we rebuild it from the root. We do not rebuild this from the shoulders, even though you're wearing the posture strap, is I'm going to actually show you guys the proper root for the rebuilding of this. And this is gonna start your biohacking, whether you come to quantum fitness or not, because what happens is because the root is closed in and the trauma body is guarding all of this mass now, and it's become a personality, this personality wants to hold everything in. It doesn't want to let it out. You want it to be out. And higher soul's like, could you make some space in there for me? So when you are adrenalized and you are up, your gut uses this energy. How do you guys think I have six pack abs almost at 47? Because I don't really work out, but I don't adrenalize my thoughts anymore. I do it in my root. I still have life stress. Come here, give me a break. I'm always getting in some trouble. All the time I'm in trouble, all day. But I adrenalize it through my gut now, all right? And that has been my game changer because I've always had the big love handles and the big overpaying. I've had four kids, that's what I said. Well, I've had four kids. So your ab muscles, right, are like this. And they're like two hands that hold the feminine and the masculine part of you together. Now, when you have a baby, right? We've got to make space for the baby. And then the husband's like, hey, you don't love me anymore. And the woman's like, shut up, right? And now it's like this. But see, what happens is after baby, we don't put this back together. We don't put the bladder back. Now we're peeing when we cough, right? And if you guys have not delivered babies, maybe your baby is your trauma, right? Maybe your abs had to separate because of all of the girth of the, of the, problems at home and money and childhood that's the baby that's sitting in there and if we do not put those abs back together the circuits between masculine and feminine which is feminine and masculine come back together and turn each other on again and this will grab a lot of your adrenaline which means testosterone is going to use your adrenaline to go and do and build and feel instead of Estrogen, have you ever been called estrogen dominant? Estrogen, just growing everything. Growing everything instead of doing, okay? So when we do not have an excess of the masculine and the feminine connection that happens in the brain and in the root chakra, and in the abs, especially the lower abs is where the man is below the belly button. They call it the little mommy pooch. The masculine is like, hey, I really want to touch you. And you're like, don't touch me. I have a headache, you know? So what we got to do is bring this back together and then everything goes in and your power center turns on, okay? It's like this force of nature that no one can F with you. Like, I, I mean, like the freedom that comes with this, you guys, like I want you to have this like right now. And if it's as simple as a $20 posture strap and learning how to tip your root up, and practice that as much as you can and give affirmations. I'm gonna give you my affirmations, okay? Then you can get 10% of this on what today, start it. And this will now start unpacking your trauma in front of you because you still have to deal with you. But you are going to be someone who has a masculine and feminine representative and the child is happy to explore the trauma. Let's see who we've become. It's not gonna be so scary. This. If, have you ever thought about cleaning the room when you're like this? Oh my God, that feels so heavy. How do you do tip your root up? Thank you. I'm going to show you, okay? It's going to be awkward, but I don't care, right? Ooh, my half poopers are here. All right, so this is this is the, the, you guys will have to tell me if you can see, okay? All right, so this is normally when we have a forward head carriage, how we stand. This is like, this is like normal people. Okay, like this, this is shocking to be normal. Okay, you see how my tummy has to come out, but then I want to cover it. My head's coming up because I'm trying to stay balanced here. And if I actually want to put my head up, I might fall over. So then I have to open up my legs because I've got so much girth here if I'm carrying a lot of belly weight. All right, can you guys see me okay? Thumbs up. All right, can you hear me okay? Okay, so then what you're going to do is first and foremost, you have to realize. How much tension is in your knees, your shoulders, your neck, and your back when your gut is atrophied, okay? 
When your gut is not strong and testosterone is not flowing upwards, this is why squats intensify testosterone because you're literally generating that masculine energy, okay? So think about your posture. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna relax your knees and relax your shoulders, okay? And you're gonna open up your shoulders a little bit. This is going to naturally open up your root. Just shoulders back, open up your root, okay? So you can see, all right? Now what's gonna happen, as soon as you open up your root, you're gonna tighten your butt. This is how my butt got so giant on accident. Well, it's always been big, but now it's okay. All right, so it's like this. Your butt is gonna naturally tighten up. I don't even care if this is going on YouTube. Okay, so you see like my shoulders went back and now my, my root is up, okay? So what I imagine is that the sun, my root needs to see the sun to open. I need to open my root and you ladies are like, Wait, you just told me put my shoulders back so my boobs are going to pop out. Now you want me to put my, yes, okay? Because what this is going to do, right? When I put my shoulders back and my knees are loose, okay? My, my forward head is here. Now I'm going to almost look like slightly open my knees a tiny bit and act like I'm opening this up, okay? What this is going to do is it's going to fully oxygenate your root. It's gonna flow that etherical inventions and ideas down into the masculine so you can do something instead of just dream, okay? This is going to open you up. It's going to produce more testosterone to balance your estrogen. This is going to use your stress differently. So you're gonna tighten your butt and you're gonna open your root. So it's, it's like, this is exaggerated, but if you guys, if your hips are very tight, you won't be able to do that. But Barb's hips were tight when she was here and she had no problem doing it, okay? So your, and your butt is just like, all of a sudden, it's like a shelf, right? So now your abs are open. All this oxygen is coming in. You're just gonna practice this. Now, when you put this posture strap on, okay? And you open up your root, what you're doing is you are burning fat and you're burning toxins through your gut energy. You are digesting again. You are oxygenating again. And what it looks like is you are literally doing like, like a forward, like humping position. And how you know it's in the right place is your butt feels really tight. It's like really like holding on, okay? Like it's just there. Now you have no pressure on your shoulders. Your shoulders feel so good. No pressure on your back, no pressure on your knees, no pressure on your hips. It's all core, 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 core. You, only thing we have to do, fix our posture and fix our core and get, and then deal with your mess that's gonna show up. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up your baggage, guys. And this is why I have seven rooms. But if you're gonna do this by yourself, without the rooms, know that you are opening the can. You're taking all your water bottles out and you're putting them in front of you, which means you're going to manifest your trauma very quickly, but you are confident. And you're not gonna be this, so you're not gonna be thinking about what you have to do. All of a sudden, ideas and solutions and magic is gonna come from down here. And now it's spinning the right way. And now it's intuitive. It's not counterintuitive. So this is one of the main things that we do to prepare for our seven rooms that we go through in quantum fitness is we start working on our posture. Because as you guys know who have come and gone through it, when I start having you do the physical expressions of the grief, like we do a physical unpacking with our um, infinity rings, we're literally like venting out all of our pain. If you're, when you're not in the right position, you're, you're not reconnecting the masculine and feminine fibers. Your masculine is, the, is your below the belly button and below, and the feminine is above, above, okay? Women, we carry heartbreak grief right here in the bat wings and right here in the back um, uh, cleavage, okay? That's where you're carrying all your heartbreak grief. This is why you can't lose weight there, all right? So that's the first place we go for. We work past, present, future trauma out of the body. Now, what you can do is with a posture strap, you can just start opening up your root. 
Okay, opening up your root. You're literally gonna kind of open your legs a little bit. Your knees are just slightly out and you're gonna feel just when you do this, how much oxygen starts to go in and how much lighter your gut feels than when you slightly open your hips. Oh my God, you just made so much room. Well, guess what a seed can do with space? It can grow, you can bloom. If you can't grow, if you feel stuck, blocked, parked, idle, alone, shackled, open up your root chakra. Open it up manually. Now, there's lots of beautiful, Lee can get on here and help me with the webinar and show you guys some root expanding exercises because she's a yogi master, okay? Lee, could you do that? Some, some of the like frog positions and stuff to practice. Now, if you have a lot of trauma, you're not gonna be able to do any of this. If you have no flexibility, your pain body is rigid, okay? Inflammation is gonna come from a rigid pain body, all right? So I'm sure Lee, who does quine fitness in Spanish, she can hop on and do us a little YouTube session on opening up the root, opening up the root. But what I want you guys to pay attention to is that when you are thinking, open up your root. When you are worrying, open up your root. When you are contemplating, when you are making a decision, stay there for three minutes before you let yourself decide. Three minutes is all it takes. And you will begin to have different energy. When your root is locked up, you have no serotonin. You don't feel safe. Your body will not make serotonin, which means you ain't getting any melatonin. All right, you need dopamine, 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 which is instant gratification right now to satisfy the, train, the, the, the trauma body. And so you're never going to become the intuitive that you studied to be if your root is locked up, right? And you can do this in your safe environments at first. And then you can join our monthly membership and I'm gonna start taking you guys through the physical working out parts because, you know, a lot, a lot of this takes a little effort, okay? A little tiny effort on your part. I mean, literally, that you could probably make a posture strap, but like the one I recommend is $20, okay? I think we've all spent that on some sort of addictive element in the last 24 hours anyways. So thinking about that idea, but not working out in it, okay? You're not working out in a posture strap. You're, you're doing the subtle unconscious states in that. And then in your conscious thinking, re training to think through the root, think through the root, because the root is the manifestation of all of you. It's I am matter. And when it's closed and counterintuitive, I don't matter. Does your life feel like you don't matter? Open up your root. Okay. This is why quantum fitness is such a physical expression. This is why we have to get out of the classroom of theory and we have to get into the body into the body, into the body, opening up the root, okay? Now, if you have major gut issues and all of this, you're gonna wanna do this very gently because remember, when you start opening up your root, you're unpacking your baggage. Your trauma is going to be exposed. You can even, what, and this is why I have this quantum fitness is because if it's gonna come out, we wanna do it in a safe environment, pre-manifestation. If it comes out in your physical life, you have to deal with it as a story. And then you might be, you know, confused. Why am I manifesting this? Okay. Be prepared to be confident with your own shiz that's going to come up. Because when you come, it's coming up anyways. I mean, even when you're like this, because you're so in resistance of it, it's just going to come up faster and it's going to come up more from a flow but you're also going to be, do you know that the most safe frequency on the entire planet is confidence? If the world was ending, you would look for the confident person. Not, you wouldn't look for someone who knew a lot. You would look for the person who was confident. Confident is the safest vibration on this planet. And this is why it's the most attractive. You are attracted to confidence, okay? confidence makes you feel like someone knows what the hell is going on around here. Wouldn't you like to be that person for you? Okay. Any other questions on this? Because I know that this is a lot, but it's really not. It's very simple science. It's biochemistry 101. It's alignment. And right now you've built an alignment that's more like that. And it's causing you to age very, very quickly, overthink very, very much, not digest very well, 
right? And also create all kinds of other people's storms that get sucked in like a hurricane to you. And now you have to deal with everybody's crap just because you're like this, okay? Questions? There was something in the queue, I think. Um, let's pull it up. It says, hey, I never had a working butt. Open up root while sitting in is tricky for me. Okay. Well, and this is when you're going to just open your legs. Okay. It's really, it's, it's really, if you're going to open up your root, you just have to open up your legs if you're sitting, you know, it's funny because it goes against the social grains of the matrix. That's not ladylike. Every single thing that we should probably be doing is probably assumed in the matrix as a negative, right? Go ahead, Barb. Uh, I'll look for these questions too. It was me with the legs open thing, but I tend to um, cock forward. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I can have my legs open and I can be cocked forward or I can try to, you know how you have us tipping it towards the sun. So should I be sort of consciously tipping towards the sun while my legs are open? No, 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 not tipping towards the sun when your legs are, when you're sitting. Okay. If you're sitting, you're going to be more toward tipping it towards the ground because you're sitting. So it's like open and tip down because then this keeps your shoulders aligned. When you're standing up, then you're like, your spine is not straight, guys. Like I have a spine that I ordered and it's like a real spine and it's a beautiful flow, but it, it it's not straight. And you are going to compensate some for the wave, but that wave is part of the flow. And it's it, once we do this and this and this and this and this to compensate for the out of alignment, then the out of alignment says, I'm starving, I'm starving, I'm starving, I'm starving, I'm starving, I'm starving. And this, this is a, um, Adrian's question of how do I use the adrenaline and cortisol for good? So when the biggest part of you, okay, men have appetites, right? Masculine energy, they can eat. Well, if I am etherically thinking with my adrenaline, remember quantum fitness 101, feminine energy is abundance and space. So I can think and think and think abundantly. A man is time and freedom. Okay. They are metabolizers. They are doers. They are productive. You have both inside of you, masculine and feminine. But if your masculine has had to be turned off because you weren't allowed to be yourself, then you probably have an atrophied root. Okay. Because the root is half masculine, half feminine. But it is once it gets into the physical manifestation of the body, it's masculine. And what it will do is when you are thinking with your root, you are going to use that adrenaline all of your body. And it's going to be processed from the center. The center of the root is going to process it, process it, process it. Then it's going to deliver to every other system, right? This is going to force the flow of blood. This is probably going to cause you to detox a little bit. This is going to give you a rush. You might feel a little high for a while, okay? Depending, because you're opening up dams. You're opening up dams of energy when you practice this. And when your shoulders are back, you're, 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 you come up naturally out here, okay? And then when you're sitting, you're just going to open up your legs a little bit, right? And rest. And you feel how strong you feel. So another manifestation of why we don't go live our dreams is because we don't feel strong. Okay, think about this. Think about your strong body or your weak body or your hurt body or your chubby body or whatever you're sitting in, okay? When you feel strong, you take more chances. You don't have as many attachments because you don't need as many people. I am barely five feet. I mean, five foot one. Well, on a good day, five, five with right shoes, but five, one. Okay. And, and I don't know if it's little man complex or what, but I've always wanted to do it myself, you know, like, but then you get into that. I have to do everything myself wounding. Right. But at the balance point of that is I can, and then I don't need to, it's the, I have to, or I don't want to, that causes the out of alignment. It's the, I can. And if anybody wants to help, that'd be great. Now I notice that I can ask for help without feeling humiliated. That was one of the biggest changes in getting my body stronger. I can ask for help because I don't feel like a weakling inside. When you feel weak inside, you don't want to ask for help because then someone's going to see you're weak. So by just strengthening your core, okay, thinking with your root, 
Also, when you guys, if you want me to really tell you how to adrenalize stress hormones right now into fat burning and muscle building and confidence soaring and six pack abs and a tight butt is when you are upset, don't sit. Do not sit because your energy wants to move. And anger is a very powerful emotion. Very, it's an elevator emotion. It can take you to the depths of hell or it can take you into power. All right, it'll take you somewhere. So if you're actually physically moving your body into a repetitive state, this is why we do the quantum fitness part. But if you're doing something that is an automatic physical reaction, like, you know, driving fast if you can, walking in a safe environment, on a treadmill, sweeping, cleaning, doing something that you don't have to give a lot of thought to what you're doing, you just gave your adrenaline a channel. And a channel is going to burn energy instead of absorb it. Okay, this is why in quantum fitness part one, I say, you rejected, if you feel rejected, go reorganize, go declutter. Okay, if you get abandoned, go make something new, right? Grief is homeless love. You got to bring something back from the dead. You got to do an art project, something. This is all the study we did in quantum fitness part one, the virtual part. But really what you need to do is when you are seriously triggered, Do not sit and think because you are going to become a rigid, dark nemesis. You're going to become a Darth Vader because the mind that is not moving and is not soaring and is not building and creating is destroying. See, there is a creative force that says, if I am creating, I'm alive. And if I am destroying me, then I will be alive again soon. So if you do not feel alive and creating, you will be secretly destroying right now. If you're not building your reality, you are destroying it. You're a creator. And and that masculine part of you is going, somebody already built my life, so I want to destroy it. And then you're like, why did my life just go in the toilet? Because your masculine energy said, hey, who built this life? I want to build it the way I want to build it. And the masculine destroys so he can build. The feminine creates the space and abundance. You, the feminine has the money. The feminine has the land. The masculine has the building materials. The masculine has the money, the time, and the freedom to do this. You need both of you, and it's right here, okay? And if this is separated, because the root is separated, the inner child is in a cage, and you are triggered, and you're thinking, you're going to spit venom, okay? You're going to be, all that demonic energy that's inside of you is going to come out somewhere on someone or something, or you could just do something productive with it. And what this does is it starts adrenalizing stress hormones. It takes your nervous system and it does what it was intended to do. You burn through all of your cortisol through a movement, not a thinking. It takes you twice as long to burn through cortisol when you're thinking anger. And so it's a slow burn, but you're also reserving because guess what? What does your body do when it's starving? It hoards. If your gut is not getting oxygen, you are tripling your calories, okay? How come my chubbiest, biggest clients eat the less? Why? They don't eat. And they go, I eat a lot. Because the thing is, is when you are starving emotionally, chemically, or physically because of a lack of oxygen, your brain says, hey guys, we're starving. Hoard everything. Take everything out of context. Triple the calories of that lettuce because you're in a ration, ration for oxygen. First thing you do when you get scared, you stop breathing. Did you know that? First thing, (gasps) forgot to breathe because you're rationing your energy. Your root never gets oxygen. So it's storing the reserves to prepare for death. You don't realize that when you get triggered, your body doesn't know if you're going to die or not. And when it is all locked up like a chain, like a necklace that you wish you could wear, but you don't have time to untangle it, this is your body. And you've got to gently untangle it, okay? And you've got to stretch it out. It's the rug that wants to, right? You can send the link for the 20. Yes, I will. I'll put the exact link that I use. It's great. Um, I'll post the pictures. How long in the day? So I'm not recommended. If you have no flexibility and your head forward head carriage is major, start with 20 minutes a day. 
Okay. It's not like do five hours. We've got to grow into that. We have, we cannot quantum leap this with the body because you will literally hurt yourself in trying to fix yourself. Remember, slow down to speed up here. Okay. Now, if you're already doing yoga and you're already working out and you know, you're already doing this and you just feel like you have a slight forward head carriage and you are an overthinker and you are fatigued and you are procrastinating and a little lazy and you got some trouble around your belly, I would do between three and five hours a day. Okay. And, and you're going to do this in those moments of unconsciousness. Like when you're driving, when you're doing things that are just so automatic, your body finds an alignment so you can do it. It's usually the wrong alignment. See, when you're doing your workout, you're paying attention to your alignment, okay? So you don't need to wear it during that time. But like when you're sitting on the computer or on your phone, right? And it's funny because you'll wear it. And I know Barbara can contest to this. It's just like a gentle reminder. It's not painful, but you just have to put your shoulders back. Is there any effect on us with electromagnetic radiation, cell phones, Wi-Fi? Yes and no. So this is a pair, uh, this is a polar universe. When you have a force field, this bad boy don't hurt you at all because your frequency trumps this. Okay. When you are a rigid, locked up, empathic being, you are absorbing this every ounce of whatever this wants to give you. Okay. So again, another reason, right? I mean, the, the phone has become our third hand, bottom line. And so you can either use it and just get right. See, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an elimination girl. I'm not like, get rid of your phones, get rid of the sugar, get rid of everything. I'm like, get your body to be alchemized, become the alchemist, and then play. Because your vibration is going to be stronger than anything that anything could come to you. You know, chemtrails, don't worry about it. You're going to actually neutralize them. The phone, you're going to be putting data into the phone and the FBI is going to be on the phone going, what is this? You know, whatever. You're going to be the commander in chief because your force field is intact as soon as your root gets repaired. Now, repairing your root repairs every other chakra. Every other chakra. Because do, 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 kundalini. And then in our next class, I'm going to tell you what happens when all those, those energies light up and it, it pops that little pineal gland, which is your Wi-Fi, which is your, is your, it, it's your cosmic bank account. Cosmic. All right. How long the posture training? Okay. So you guys, I don't wear mine very often unless I'm going through a lot now, because my posture is really, really good. Unless I hit a baggage point. Like if I get in a little struggle or a little challenge in my life, I'll notice like, oh, my neck. And then I'll be like, oh, my posture. So I'll use it as, it's almost like a kind of a spirit guide to help me remember down to think down here, okay? So I might wear mine one hour a week at this point, if that. And sometimes I don't even wear it unless you guys are here and I'm telling you to wear it because I forgot. But in the beginning, you're gonna forget a lot. So again, consistency and routine, all right? If, depending on how entangled your body is, start slow. If your body feels like you're ready, three to five hours a day in your unconscious spaces of you're just doing life in your automatics, thinking, adrenalize, but move, right? Like I was telling Barb one day, it's like if you're having a bad SI day and you can't get out of bed, if you get triggered, do snow angels in your bed. No excuses. Channel the energy. Channel the energy because if you keep it all here, you're adrenalizing thought and you're becoming a super overthinker. Or you're going to oxygenate and you're going to move that energy and it's actually going to be sustainable energy for you that creates euphoria. You're going to feel the endorphins like you worked out from your trigger. And you're going to start processing it through your root and all of a sudden, all that belly fat is going to start going away and you're going to be like, what? I didn't even order that, right? And it's just cool because all you're doing is processing the same stress differently. What is the real reason I feel better when I'm all alone? Because no one's triggering you. No one's tapping into your wounded parts. No one is reflecting back any of your trauma. This is why we all love to be alone. And I don't think that being alone is a bad thing unless you're doing it because you can't trust people or you don't want to take their energy. 
Like I truly believe that we are all, all introverts and extroverts. There's no like, I'm an introvert. We're both. We love to go out there and shine and we love to be alone. And it's an equal parts and it needs to be coming from a safe place, okay? So when you have a lot of trauma, you're going to want to be alone. Now, that's a, that, that is kind of a, a victim mentality of trauma. The other side is perpetrator. I have so much trauma, I can't be alone. If you can't get out of that relationship because you don't think you can make it on your own, your trauma is telling you you can't be alone. And so you're never alone. You're on the phone with someone, you're calling someone, you're watching a video, you're with the wrong person, you're, you're with whoever is there because trauma does not act one way. It just acts either perpetrator or victim. It either pushes itself on someone or it sucks at someone. And when we want to be alone, it is because we don't want anyone bumping into it, okay? When you have an owie, you don't want someone to touch it until it heals. But trauma, you think is healed if there's no one there. We all do. We are like, I'm healed. I feel amazing. And then you get in a relationship and you're like, I am jacked up right? Like none of this is healed. And that's how you know. So the bravest of us are constantly putting ourselves out there, but using our reality as our feedback and then going back in and channeling the energy different. So all you have to do is channel your stress energy differently through your root, shoulders back alignment, and then teach your body how to do this over and over and over again. It will become your new normal. You might have to Think about this for about 90 days, like intentionally thinking about this. After 90 days of doing this intentionally, consistently, routinely, it becomes an automatic. And then that's when I had, that's when I could completely stop dieting. Then that's when I could start eating sugar again or drinking an alcohol occasionally because I wasn't putting on weight. I wasn't getting my fibromyalgia symptoms back. I wasn't feeling hungover. I was feeling nothing from the food. But it took me 90 days of consistently doing this with my posture. And then after the 90 days, I also, my confidence raised because I dropped so much weight. You know what I mean? So it was just like, there were so many things that were happening. Now, again, I took my baggage into the quantum fitness space because I did not want to manifest it in physical reality. That's my preference. But if you guys are going to do this, you know, make sure that you have designated time to kind of work through stuff because it's going to come out. You're hiding it right now. And you might not be in a safe environment. So create a safe environment for yourself, even if it's a closet, like make a little nest for yourself so that you can go and get your space, okay? All right, you need to have that space. Men need to have their freedom, okay? So this is important for your integrating. You're saying yes to the trauma, but you're saying I am confident and aware and I have intuitive. When you are like this and your trauma gets out, you're counterintuitive. You are not you. You are triggered. You're your mother. You're, you're mean. Okay. You're ugly. So, and I don't mean ugly, ugly. I mean, you're just being ugly. When you're triggered and you're like this, you're counterintuitively reacting. When you're like this and you're triggered, you're intuitively responding to your environment. Plus, it doesn't hurt so much because you're rebuilding a force field. That force field is stronger than any force on this planet. So this is a win, 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 win. $20, some consistency and some routine. Okay, guys, I'll post all the pictures I had. You can go exploring on this, okay? The science is all very simple, all right? I just put these pieces together and figured this out from literally need. I just knew enough to get me in trouble here. And I figured it out from all my Cairo years, all my healing years, all my energy years, all my biochemistry years, all my spiritual years, and it just works. All right. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, and 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 please don't do more. Like don't don't over process here. Be gentle with your pain body because it does not want to change. It likes what it is. So there's a gentle, like just with a drug addict or anything else, your body is programmed to be like this. So it's a gentle reminder. It automatically became this way from practice and practice and practice. So now we have to practice, practice gently a new way. If you do it gently, your trauma will come out gently. Okay. If you do this aggressively, hope you're ready for it because it's all going to manifest. 
all right? Which is fine because you're gonna get through it. You're gonna get through it. You're strong enough and confident enough. Your root can handle anything. Your head can't handle anything, okay? Getting ready. All right, guys, love you. Have a great week. And I will post all these pictures. I'll upload them right now, Jules. And as soon as she can get them on, she'll put them up, okay? Sorry, I couldn't figure that out. I'll practice for next week. Bye, guys.